Divine Provision, Let God Fulfill Your Every Need Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Imagine you're searching for a way to trust more in God's provision, similar to how George Muller, a man of faith, relied solely on divine provision to fund his orphanages in the 1800s. You'd want a guide that breaks down how to tap into this abundant resource, wouldn't you? Now, consider this, a step-by-step walkthrough in a book that uses Bible references to help you grasp the concept of divine provision. This guide could reveal how to let God fulfill your every need, just as he promises in Philippians 4 verse 19. That's interesting. Let's dive deeper into this subject together. Chapter 1 Understanding Divine Provision Your understanding of divine provision, a gift from the heavens, can fundamentally transform your perspective on life's challenges and opportunities. This spiritual concept, found in various religious and philosophical systems, posits that the universe or a higher power provides for our needs, often in ways we may not initially comprehend. It's a belief that can provide comfort and guidance, anchoring you in times of turmoil. You may question, what exactly is divine provision? It's the belief that every resource you need, whether it be material, spiritual, or emotional, is supplied by a higher power. It's about trusting that the universe, or God, or whatever higher power you believe in, has your best interests at heart. Understanding divine provision requires faith and surrender. It's not about sitting idly by, waiting for miracles to happen. Rather, It's about actively engaging in your life, making responsible choices, and trusting that the divine will provide. You're not alone in your journey, you're in partnership with the divine. This transformative understanding enables you to navigate life's tumultuous waters with confidence and grace. It empowers you to face challenges head-on, knowing that you're supported and cared for. It inspires you to seize opportunities, confident that the divine will provide the resources you need. In understanding divine provision, you'll discover a wellspring of hope and resilience. You'll find the strength to persevere, the courage to push forward, and the wisdom to discern the divine's gifts in your life. You'll learn to trust in the divine's provision, and in doing so, you'll find a profound sense of peace and fulfillment. Chapter 2 Biblical Foundations While you're exploring the concept of divine provision, it's enlightening to contemplate its roots in biblical teachings. The Bible, a sacred text for Christians, unfolds the profound wisdom of God's provision in a multitude of ways. It's not merely about physical sustenance but also encompasses spiritual nourishment, emotional comfort, and guidance. From the Old Testament, consider the story of manna in the wilderness. Here, God provided sustenance for the Israelites in their time of need, Exodus 16. In the New Testament, Jesus' miracle of feeding the 5,000, Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21, illustrates God's ability to multiply our resources beyond human comprehension. These examples aren't just historical accounts, but timeless truths of God's care for His people. Remember, divine provision isn't a transactional relationship with God, where you do something to earn His provision. It's a testament to His boundless love and grace to His children. The Bible assures us that God knows our needs before we even ask, Matthew 6 verse 8. Hence, divine provision isn't about amassing wealth or material possessions, but about trusting in God's perfect timing and His unfailing ability to provide. Understanding this biblical foundation will help you anchor your faith in God's divine provision. As you explore further into the Bible, you'll realize that divine provision is a pervasive theme, a confirmation of God's love and sustenance. Trust in Him, and you'll never lack the essential things in life, for He's the ultimate provider. He provides not out of shortage but from His abundance. Chapter 3. God's Promises. Delving into God's promises, you'll discover an assurance of His divine provision, a confirmation of His unending commitment to care for His children. Each promise in the Bible is a manifestation of His love and faithfulness, offering you a glimpse of His benevolent nature and His intention to bless and provide for those who love and follow Him. In the Old Covenant, 
God made several promises to the Israelites. One such promise can be found in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 where God promises to open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, to bless the work of your hands. In the New Covenant, the promise of divine provision becomes even more explicit. In Philippians 4 verse 19, the Apostle Paul assures the Philippians that my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. These promises aren't mere words. They're spiritual assurances, backed by God's unchangeable character. They're the very backbone of His relationship with us, His children. As you navigate through your journey of faith, these promises act as a compass, guiding you towards a life of divine provision. However, it's crucial to understand that God's promises aren't a magic formula for an easy life. They don't guarantee a life devoid of hardship or struggle. Instead, they assure us that, in the midst of life's storms, God is a refuge. His divine provision is available to sustain and help us overcome. It's in this understanding that you'll experience the reality of God's promises. Chapter 4 Faith and Trust In order to fully comprehend and experience the reality of God's promises, you need to cultivate a deep sense of faith and trust in Him. This faith isn't merely a mental acknowledgement of God's existence. It's a heartfelt conviction that God is trustworthy, that His Word is true, and that His promises are reliable. It's a commitment to rely on Him, to depend on Him, and to trust Him with your every need. Your faith is like a spiritual muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. You strengthen your faith by reading and meditating on God's Word, by spending time in prayer and worship, and by choosing to trust Him in every situation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 6, And without faith it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. This verse underscores the importance of faith in our relationship with God. It's not enough to simply believe in God's existence. We must also trust in His goodness, in His love, and in His ability to provide for us. Trust, on the other hand, is a confident expectation that God will fulfill His promises. It's about surrendering control and allowing God to lead. Trusting in God means letting go of your worries, your fears, and your doubts, and choosing to believe that God will provide for you, even when circumstances seem bleak. This trust isn't naive or foolish. It's rooted in the knowledge of God's character and in the certainty of His promises. Chapter 5 Seeking God's Guidance one key aspect on the journey of divine provision is actively seeking God's guidance, a step that requires both humility and a willingness to surrender your own understanding. Recognize that God's wisdom surpasses your own. Embrace the fact that His ways are higher than your ways, and His thoughts than your thoughts, as depicted in Isaiah 55 verse 9. To seek God's guidance, you must first cultivate a listening heart. This means being still, quieting your thoughts, and tuning in to hear God's voice above all others. The Bible encourages us in Psalm 46 verse 10 to be still and know that I'm God. Being still allows you to discern God's voice and receive His divine guidance. Next, immerse yourself in God's Word. The Bible is a treasure trove of wisdom and guidance, a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, Psalm 119 verse 105. As you meditate on God's Word, you'll discover His principles, promises, and instructions that will guide you in every area of your life. Finally, be willing to obey God's guidance, even when it contradicts your personal desires or expectations. Obedience might seem challenging, but it's the key to accessing divine provision. As Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 reminds us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. In seeking God's guidance, you're positioning yourself to experience His divine provision in a remarkable way. Let this be your daily pursuit. Chapter 6 Prayer for Provision Keep in mind that prayer is the direct channel that connects you to the heavenly provision that God has for you as you travel along your spiritual path. 
It's not a mere ritual or a list of demands, but a heartfelt conversation with your creator who already knows your needs. Acknowledge his omnipotence, express your dependence, and trust in his ability to provide. At its core, prayer for provision is an act of faith. You're not only asking God for your earthly needs but also demonstrating your belief in his ability and willingness to provide. It's not about the size or complexity of your needs, it's about trusting the provider. So, how do you pray for provision? Start by acknowledging God as your source. Lord, I recognize that everything I've comes from you. Next, express your needs with humility, not as an entitled child but as a trusting one. Father, I need your provision in this area of my life. Then, unburden your worries and anxieties onto him. I'm worried about this, God, and I need your peace. Now, here's the key, end your prayer with a statement of faith. I know you'll provide according to your perfect will and timing. It's not a magic formula, but a heartfelt affirmation of your trust in God's provision. Your faith, expressed through prayer, opens the door for divine provision. Chapter 7 Scriptures on Provision Turning our focus to the Bible, we find numerous verses that serve as powerful reminders of God's promise to provide for our needs. These scriptures aren't just ancient texts, they're vibrant promises that still ring true today. They help you understand that God's provision isn't a one-time event, but a continuous, ever-present aspect of your spiritual journey. Consider Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33, where Jesus encourages you not to worry about your earthly needs. He promises that if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else will be given to you. This scripture emphasizes the priority of spiritual pursuits over material concerns, reminding you that God's provision extends far beyond physical needs. Then, there's Philippians 4 verse 19, which assures you that God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. It's a wonderful reassurance that God's provision isn't limited by earthly standards. It's abundant, unlimited, and tailored to your specific needs. Another powerful scripture is Psalm 34 verse 10. It teaches that those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. This scripture encourages you to actively seek God and His righteousness, promising that in doing so, you'll never lack anything good. These scriptures on provision aren't just comforting words. They're divine promises, meant to inspire faith and reliance on God. They remind you that God's provision isn't defined by human standards. It's a divine, perfectly tailored supply that meets all your needs, even those you're not aware of. Learn, meditate, and rest in these truths, and let them guide your understanding of divine provision. Chapter 8 The Role of Obedience How important is obedience in understanding and experiencing divine provision? Obedience is paramount, not as a means to earn God's provisions but as a reflective response to His love and grace. Your obedience to God's commandments and instructions demonstrates your faith in His ability to provide for you. It's not about following rules blindly, but about trusting that His ways are higher than ours, and His plans are for our good. When you obey, you acknowledge that He's the source of all good things and that His promises are reliable. The Bible repeatedly emphasizes the relationship between obedience and divine provision. In Deuteronomy 28 verses 1-2, God promised blessings upon the Israelites if they obeyed His commands. The Apostle Paul, in Philippians 4 verse 19, stated that God will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory, a promise that's conditional on our obedience and faithfulness. Obedience, however, isn't merely a transactional relationship where you obey to get something in return. It's about establishing a relationship of trust, respect, and love with God. Your obedience is a confirmation of your faith, recognizing that He's in control and will provide for you. In essence, obedience is a critical element in experiencing divine provision. It's an outward expression of inner faith, a conduit for God's blessings, and a confirmation of His faithfulness. As you deepen your obedience, you'll see divine provision unfold in your life, not because you've earned it, but because you've positioned yourself in alignment with God's will. 
Chapter 9 Examples from the Old Testament Delving into the Old Scripture, you'll encounter compelling examples of divine provision linked to obedience. The story of Abraham, for instance, highlights the profound blessings received through obedience. When asked by God to sacrifice his son Isaac, Abraham didn't hesitate. He trusted God entirely, displaying obedience that was rewarded with divine provision. Instead of Isaac, a ram was provided for the sacrifice, Genesis 22 verses 1 to 14. Consider the Israelites, enslaved in Egypt for centuries. Their obedience to God's command to mark their doorposts with lamb's blood during the Passover led to their deliverance, Exodus 12 verses 21 to 30. As they journeyed in the wilderness, God miraculously provided manna and quail for sustenance, and water from a rock, Exodus 16 verses 4 to 15, Exodus 17 verses 5 to 6. Such divine provision is a testimony to their obedience and faith. Take note of Elijah, a prophet during a severe famine. Directed by God, he went to Zarephath where a widow, herself on the brink of starvation, generously shared her last resources with him. In return, her jar of flour and jug of oil never ran dry, 1 Kings 17 verses 7 to 16. This was a divine provision rooted in obedience and generosity. Chapter 10 Examples from the New Testament Journeying into the world of the New Scripture, you'll find resounding instances of divine provision that are intrinsically tied to faith and obedience. Take, for instance, the story of the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. Jesus, seeing the physical hunger of the crowd, provided abundantly from five loaves and two fishes. This wasn't only a miracle of multiplication but a profound demonstration of God's provision when human resources seem insufficient. Consider also the story of Peter's miraculous catch of fish in Luke 5 verses 1 to 11. Despite toiling all night and catching nothing, Peter's obedience to Jesus' command resulted in a net-breaking, boat-sinking load of fish. This account illustrates how divine provision often comes when we obey God's instructions, even when they defy human logic. Moreover, Paul's journey to Rome in Acts 27 offers another compelling example. Despite a violent storm, shipwreck, and potential execution, Paul and his shipmates all survived. Through divine intervention, not a single life was lost. This narrative reinforces the idea that God's provision isn't just for physical needs, but also for protection in times of danger. The new scripture is replete with examples that vividly portray God's divine provision. As you explore further, you'll discover that these aren't just historical accounts but timeless truths that still apply today. Each story serves as a reminder that God is ever ready to provide for your every need when you live in faith and obedience. Chapter 11 the power of gratitude. In the grand tapestry of divine provision, gratitude emerges as a powerful thread, weaving together human faith and God's abundant blessings. It's a spiritual discipline that, when practiced consistently, can strengthen your relationship with God and open your eyes to the blessings you've been given. Gratitude is a reaction to God's grace. When you acknowledge the blessings in your life and express thankfulness, you align yourself with God's intentions for you. It's about recognizing His love, provision, and care in both the big and small aspects of your life. Consider the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Here, gratitude isn't just an afterthought, but an integral part of our communication with God. It's a powerful act of faith, acknowledging that even in hardship, God is good. Practicing gratitude also has the potential to shift your perspective. It refocuses your attention from what you lack to the abundance you possess, which is especially relevant in a culture that often emphasizes scarcity in comparison. As you cultivate a heart of thankfulness, you'll find your reliance on God deepens, and your trust in His provision grows. Chapter 12 God's Abundance You'll begin to perceive God's abundance when you shift your focus from scarcity to the plentiful blessings around you. 
It's easy to get trapped in a mindset of lack, focusing on what you don't have rather than what you do. But God's abundance is all around us, in every breath we take, every sunrise we witness, and every moment of love we share. It's there in the laughter of children, the beauty of nature, and the peace that comes from a deep and abiding faith. The Bible is replete with references to God's abundance. In Psalms 65 verse 11, David praises God, saying, You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. This verse illustrates the boundless generosity of God, who not only fulfills our needs but exceeds them. Even in times of hardship, God's provisions are more than sufficient. God's abundance isn't just about material wealth. It also encompasses peace, joy, love, and spiritual fulfillment. In John 10 verse 10, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. This fullness of life is the ultimate expression of God's abundance. To grasp God's abundance, you must open your heart and mind to the infinite possibilities that God has in store for you. Embrace gratitude, and trust in God's divine provision. As you do, you'll discover a richness of life that far surpasses anything the world can offer. In God's kingdom, there's no scarcity, only abundance. Through faith, you're privy to this divine abundance. Chapter 13 Overcoming Doubt while embracing God's abundance can seem overwhelmingly positive, it's natural to encounter moments of doubt, yet these can be overcome with faith and understanding. Doubt can creep in subtly, whispering questions and raising uncertainties about the divine provision you've been promised. It's in these moments that your faith is truly tested. God's Word, however, offers a robust antidote to doubt. When you immerse yourself in scriptures, you'll find numerous reassurances of his ability and willingness to provide for your needs. Consider Matthew 6 verse 26, where Jesus reminds us that if God cares even for the birds of the air, how much more will he care for us? This is a powerful reminder to not let doubt cloud your faith. Of course, overcoming doubt isn't just about reading and believing, it's about internalizing and living out your faith. This means praying earnestly, asking God to strengthen your belief and dispel any doubts. It also means practicing gratitude, recognizing and appreciating God's provision in your life, even in the smallest of ways. Doubt can be a stumbling block, but it doesn't have to be a dead end. Think of it as an opportunity to deepen your faith and understanding of God's divine provision. Remember, God doesn't forsake those who seek Him, Psalm 9 verse 10. Chapter 14 Spiritual Discernment Moving beyond doubt, your spiritual discernment becomes a pivotal tool in recognizing and understanding God's divine provision. This discernment, a gift bestowed upon you by the Holy Spirit, is an inner compass guiding you towards the divine blessings that God has in store for you. It's a spiritual lens that brings the unseen into focus, illuminating God's hand at work in your life. As a believer, you're encouraged to pray for spiritual discernment. It's through seeking wisdom in prayer that you gain insight into the divine workings of God's providence. The Bible in James 1 verse 5 states, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. This promise reassures you that God freely offers His wisdom to those who earnestly seek it. An essential aspect of spiritual discernment is understanding that God's provision may not always look like what you expect. It's not always monetary or material, it can be peace, strength, or wisdom in a time of need. Remember, the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4 verse 19 assures us, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Trust in this promise. In cultivating spiritual discernment, you're not just acknowledging God's provision but understanding it in depth. You're developing an intimate relationship with God that allows you to recognize His hand in your life. In this journey of discernment, you're not alone. God is there, guiding you every step of the way. Chapter 15 Aligning with God's Will As you continue your spiritual journey, it's crucial to align yourself with God's will, 
understanding that his plans for you surpass your earthly desires and expectations. This alignment doesn't mean renouncing your ambitions or goals, but rather adjusting them to coincide with God's divine blueprint for your life. It's a spiritual harmony that requires humility, surrender, and trust in God's wisdom. You see, God's will isn't designed to restrict you but rather to free you. It's about surrendering the illusion of control and embracing the truth of divine provision. The Bible illustrates this in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, which urges you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. Aligning with God's will involves seeking His guidance continually. It requires fervent prayer, diligent study of the scriptures, and a willing heart to obey God's commands. This process may not always be comfortable or convenient, but remember, God's ways aren't our ways, Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. His perspective is eternal, and His plans are driven by a love that's boundless and unconditional. Chapter 16 Practical Applications Now, let's explore practical ways you can align with God's will and tap into the divine provision He's in store for you. First, foster a deep, meaningful relationship with God. This isn't about religious rituals, but about sincerely communicating with Him, reading His Word, and listening for His guidance. It's about trusting Him to lead you, even when the path isn't clear. Second, cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Recognize the blessings you already have, and express thankfulness for them. This aligns you with the divine principle of abundance and opens the door for more to flow into your life. The Bible admonishes in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Third, let go of worry. Worry is a sign of mistrust in God's provision. Instead, focus on faith. As you trust in Him, you'll find that God is faithful to provide all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 19. Lastly, be a conduit of blessing. God's provision isn't just for your benefit, it's intended to flow through you to others. As you freely give, you'll receive in return. This principle is echoed in Luke 6 verse 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. Chapter 17 Testimonies of Faith Drawing from practical applications of divine provision, it's equally inspiring to examine real-life experiences where faith played a significant role. You'll find countless testimonies from individuals who've witnessed God's provision in their lives, reinforcing the truth that faith is an integral part of experiencing divine provision. Consider the story of a woman who was on the brink of financial ruin. In her desperation, she turned to God in prayer, stating her needs and expressing her faith in His provision. Within weeks, an unexpected job opportunity materialized, providing her with the resources she desperately needed. This story is a demonstration of the power of faith and God's ability to provide when we trust in Him. This example echoes Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Similarly, there are numerous accounts of individuals facing severe health conditions who, despite the odds, found healing and restoration through their unwavering faith in God's ability to provide. Such stories bring to life the words of Psalms 103 verse 3, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Stories of faith aren't just stories, they're tangible evidence of God's divine provision in action. They serve as powerful reminders that faith isn't passive, it's an active, conscious decision to trust in God's ability to provide. And when we do, we open ourselves to the limitless provision of our Heavenly Father. Chapter 18 Daily Devotional Practices Regularly engaging in daily devotional practices can greatly deepen your connection to God, fostering a powerful sense of faith and opening paths to divine provision. These practices are a cornerstone of spiritual growth, acting as a conduit for divine guidance and blessings. They're intentional moments of connection, where you encounter God's presence, lean into His Word, and surrender your needs, 
thereby inviting His divine provision into your life. Consider starting your day with prayer. This doesn't have to be lengthy or elaborate, it's about expressing your gratitude, acknowledging your dependence on God, and entrusting your day to Him. As stated in Psalms 5 verse 3, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice, in the morning I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. Reading and meditating on the scriptures is another essential practice. The Bible isn't just a book, it's God's living word, a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Psalms 119 verse 105. As you read, ask God to open your heart to His teachings, letting them nourish your soul and guide your steps. Lastly, make it a habit to reflect on God's faithfulness throughout your day. Recognizing His hand in the mundane and the extraordinary fosters a grateful heart, which is fertile ground for divine provision. Chapter 19. Community and Support. While personal devotional practices unquestionably foster spiritual growth, the role of community and support in cultivating divine provision can't be overlooked. You're not meant to journey through life alone. God's design includes the beautiful reality of community, a place where you can experience His provision and love through the hands and hearts of others. When you engage in a community of faithful believers, you're giving yourself the opportunity to both receive and provide divine support. This mutual give and take isn't simply transactional, but transformational. It's a chance for you to witness God's miracles in the lives of others, and for others to see His work in yours. Take a step toward community involvement by joining a local church, small group, or spiritual retreat. Embrace the diversity and richness of experiences, perspectives, and wisdom that others bring to the table you'll find that their insights can be instrumental in deepening your understanding of God's Word, His promises, and His provision. More than merely an avenue for spiritual growth, community also provides emotional and practical support. We're told in Galatians 6 verse 2 that we should carry each other's burdens, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ. This means that when you're faced with difficulties, you're not alone. Your community rallies around you, offering support, prayers, and help. Chapter 20 Scriptures for Meditation Countless scriptures offer profound insights for meditation, enabling you to explore further into God's divine provision and promises. You're invited to dive deeper into the Word, to reflect on God's promises, and to contemplate His provision. One scripture that's particularly powerful is Philippians 4 verse 19 and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Meditating on this verse, you can be reassured that God's capacity to provide is limitless, tied not to the constraints of this world but to the immeasurable riches of His glory. Another scripture for meditation is Matthew 6 verses 31-32, So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Here, Jesus is teaching us not to be consumed by worldly concerns. Your Father knows your needs and provides accordingly. Moving on, Psalm 23 verse 1 states, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. This verse encourages the knowledge that in God's care, you'll experience no lack. He's a shepherd that makes sure his sheep are well catered for. Finally, Consider meditating on 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound in every good work. God's provision isn't just about meeting needs, it's about equipping you for every good work. These scriptures, among others, provide rich material for meditation on God's divine provision. Chapter 21. Trusting God's Timing. In addition to meditating on God's divine provision, a significant aspect of your spiritual journey involves learning to trust in God's impeccable timing. It may seem important, especially when life circumstances are overwhelming, but the Bible reassures us that God makes everything beautiful in His time, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. God's divine timeline, often unfathomable to our finite minds, operates beyond our human comprehension. His ways are higher than ours, His thoughts extend beyond our understanding, 
Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9. But rest assured, His timing is always perfect, never early nor late. God's clock is set to the rhythm of His divine wisdom, and He orchestrates events with precision and purpose. One important step in trusting God's timing is surrendering control. You're not giving up but acknowledging that God's plan and timing are superior to your own. It's about letting go and letting God. Remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. They waited decades for the promise of a son, yet in God's perfect timing, Isaac was born, fulfilling God's promise, Genesis 21 verse 2. Embrace the waiting periods in your life as times of growth and preparation. God often uses these seasons to mold us, to develop our faith, character, and resilience. Time spent waiting on God is never wasted, it's invested. Chapter 22 The Role of Stewardship Beyond trusting in God's timing, you also play an important role in embodying stewardship, a divine mandate that's integral to understanding and experiencing God's provision. Stewardship in its essence, means managing and caring for what's been entrusted to you. It's much more than just handling finances or resources, it's about your whole life. Your talents, time, abilities, and even the breath in your lungs are all gifts from God. As a steward, you've been given the responsibility to manage these gifts wisely, not just for your benefit, but for the greater good and for God's glory. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 stresses the importance of this role, saying, Now it's required that those who've been given a trust must prove faithful. This principle of stewardship is deeply rooted in the Bible. From the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 to the story of Joseph managing Egypt's resources in Genesis 41, we see God rewarding those who act as good stewards. Therefore, commit to being diligent and faithful in your stewardship, and you'll see how God provides in abundance. Chapter 23 Generosity and Giving Embracing a heart of generosity, you'll find, is a key element in accessing the divine provision that God has in store for you. It's not merely about giving out of abundance, but rather embodying a spirit of selflessness and love. God's Word encourages you to give, not grudgingly or under compulsion, but cheerfully, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. This type of giving is an act of faith and obedience, demonstrating your trust in God's provision. Generosity, you'll discover, is a powerful tool that breaks the cycle of scarcity and ushers in an atmosphere of abundance. It's not merely about material possessions, but also includes giving of your time, talents, and even your very life to serve others. As you give, you position yourself not only to receive but also to experience the joy that comes from giving. Remember the words of Jesus himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive, Acts 20 verse 35. However, don't confuse the act of giving as a means to earn God's favor or manipulate the divine provision. It's not a transaction, but a transformation. Your generosity should be an outpouring of gratitude for God's love and grace in your life. It's an act of worship, a tangible way to express your love for God and others. As you give, you'll find that the divine provision isn't just about meeting your needs, but also about empowering you to be a conduit of God's blessings to others. Chapter 24 Worship and Praise Diving into the heart of worship and praise, you'll uncover another profound avenue to access divine provision. This spiritual practice allows you to connect directly with God, aligning your desires with His divine will, thereby opening the door to His boundless blessings. Psalm 100 verse 4 advises us to enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise, giving thanks to Him and praising His name. As you yield yourself in worship, you're not just expressing adoration for God, but also acknowledging His sovereignty over your life. You're surrendering your needs, desires, and worries, trusting Him to provide just as He promised in Matthew 6 verse 33, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Praise, on the other hand, is your joyful acknowledgement of God's goodness and faithfulness. It's an affirmation of your trust in His ability to provide. 
Philippians 4 verse 6 encourages you to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This verse suggests that praise creates a conducive atmosphere for divine provision. As you engage in worship and praise, remember that it's not a transactional relationship, but a heartfelt connection with God. It is about placing Him at the top of your priority list, with the assurance that He is concerned about you and will provide for your requirements in accordance with His abundant resources and glory. Chapter 25 Living in Abundance You're about to commence on an enlightening journey through living in abundance. This will involve understanding divine abundance, studying biblical principles of abundance, embracing God's provisions, overcoming the scarcity mindset, and learning how to manifest abundant living. Embrace this opportunity to discover the richness and depth of God's provision in your life. Living in abundance, especially divine abundance, isn't about accumulating physical wealth, rather, it's about recognizing and appreciating the bountiful blessings that are already present in your life. Unlike the world's definition of abundance, which tends to focus on material possessions, divine abundance explores deeper into the spiritual domain. It's about feeling fulfilled, content, and at peace with your life circumstances, regardless of what they are. Understanding divine abundance means accepting that God's provision for you isn't limited by earthly standards. Divine abundance isn't necessarily having a surplus of material goods, but rather, it's having all that you need and more in terms of love, peace, joy, and fulfillment. It's about having a rich spiritual life, where your every need is met by God's grace. In essence, divine abundance is understanding that God's blessings aren't always monetary or material. They can show up as good health, loving relationships, peace of mind, and other invaluable gifts. When you grasp this concept, you're not just living in abundance, but you're living in divine abundance. Consequently, your perception of abundance shifts from the physical to the spiritual, opening your heart to receive God's boundless blessings. Embracing the biblical principles of abundance transforms your perspective, allowing you to see God's provision in every aspect of your life. You realize that God's blessings aren't limited to material possessions but encompass a plethora of gifts including peace, joy, wisdom, and purpose. This understanding deepens your faith and shifts your focus from scarcity to abundance. The Bible, in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, assures you that God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound in every good work. This promise isn't conditional on your circumstances but is rooted in God's character. His desire for your abundant life is a reflection of His boundless love. Living in abundance also means being a channel of blessings to others. As you freely receive from God, you're encouraged to freely give, Matthew 10 verse 8. This principle isn't a call to hoard but to share, creating a cycle of blessings. In the grand tapestry of life, Embracing God's provisions means acknowledging and utilizing His bountiful gifts to live in true abundance. It's seeing beyond the physical and recognizing that there's an infinite wellspring of divine supply available to you. This supply isn't confined to financial means but encompasses peace, love, wisdom, and every good thing you could possibly need. Recognize that God's generosity is boundless. He's willing to provide for your every need, not out of obligation but out of His deep love for you. The Bible, in Philippians 4 verse 19, assures that God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. It's a promise of abundant provision, a confirmation of His unfailing love. Embracing God's provisions requires an open heart and a receptive spirit. Align yourself with God's promises by meditating on His Word, praying, and showing gratitude for His provisions. Be confident that as you seek Him, He'll supply your needs and even the desires of your heart. To overcome a scarcity mindset, you must first recognize that it's a barrier to experiencing the fullness of God's divine provisions. Fear and a lack of resources are the foundations of a scarcity mindset, both of which are in direct opposition to the abundant essence of God. You see, the Bible teaches us, in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, 
that God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. This scripture reaffirms that God's provisions aren't only sufficient but abundant. Therefore, a scarcity mindset is fundamentally misaligned with God's truth. Begin the transformation by challenging your limiting beliefs. Ask yourself, are my thoughts about scarcity based on truth or fear? Then, replace these fears with God's promises of divine provision, as outlined in scriptures like Philippians 4 verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Overcoming a scarcity mindset isn't simply about changing thoughts, but about aligning your mindset with God's truth. It's about living in the abundant life that Jesus promised in John 10 verse 10, where he assures us that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Manifesting an abundant life, a life where you're fully immersed in God's divine provision, requires a deep-seated shift in your mindset and perspective. You've got to unlearn the scarcity mindset and embrace the abundance that God has promised in His Word. As you consciously change your thinking and perception, you're aligning yourself with the truth of divine provision and opening doors for God's blessings to flow freely into your life. Remember, the Bible affirms in Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Moreover, living abundantly isn't merely about material wealth. It's also about spiritual abundance, emotional peace, and relational harmony. John 10 verse 10 tells us that Jesus came so we may have life and have it to the full. This fullness includes peace, joy, love, wisdom, and satisfaction that money can't buy. So, dear reader, you've journeyed through the wilderness just as the Israelites did, seeking manna from heaven. Like them, you've found God's divine provision. You've learned to trust, to faithfully seek His guidance, to steward well, and to live abundantly. Remember, His promises are true, He will supply all your needs. So, go forth with a grateful heart, generously giving, worshipping, and praising. Your divine provision is assured. Be blessed as you continue this journey with God. Thanks for listening.